welcome to season four of Baltimore Pioneers, coming to you from the historic Parkway Theater in Baltimore. On this show, we talk with compelling thinkers and doers in Baltimore. I'm Jacqueline Hammett, and thanks for tuning in to this student-produced show. Our guests in this episode are Mercedes Thompson and Claire Wayner, co-founders of Baltimore Beyond Plastic and students from Baltimore Polytechnic Institute. Since 2016, they have advocated for the complete ban of styrofoam here at city schools, in front of Baltimore City Councils, rallies down in Annapolis, and here to talk about this incredible journey to address environmental issues facing Baltimore and beyond. Hi, how are you guys today? We're doing really well, considering the recent news. Yes, can you please tell us about that? That's very exciting. Um, City Council on Monday recently announced that they're pretty much going to move forward with passing a styrofoam ban in Baltimore City. That is absolutely amazing. I'm very excited for you all, and I'm glad that everything turned out well. So our first question in this segment is, let's start, like, let's take it back. In 2016, what sparked the idea for Baltimore Beyond Plastic? So Claire and I are both interns at the Baltimore Office of Sustainability, and we heard about the statewide styrofoam ban. Um, but within the Baltimore Office of Sustainability, since it's a government agency, you're not allowed to take a stance on any um, legislation. So we as students recognize the need to get this bill passed because we eat off of styrofoam trays in our Baltimore City Public Schools. So Claire and I took a weekend, basically in our living rooms, and started creating a website for an organization called Baltimore Beyond Plastic. And I would say for you guys, was there any like like big event that really sparked and was like, okay, we really need to push this, we need to like move forward, like this is really serious. That's kind of like the big drive for this. Yeah, um, back in December 2016, before we had really given a name to the group, we had an interest dinner at Red Emma's uh, just to bring students um, from across Baltimore City in to see whether they would be interested in campaigning against styrofoam. And we got, uh, really unexpectedly large crowd. I mean, the room was packed and we realized that this was an issue that was near and dear to the hearts of um, all students. And so we wanted to work closer on that. And when doing small business surveying down at Lexington Market to assess the issue of styrofoam, um, we went around to each and every stall and we noticed every single stall in Lexington Market used styrofoam. So we knew that all the trash that was coming not only from Lexington Market, but from restaurants all across the city and the state um, had an especially large impact on like the bay and our environment. And specifically like what is so harmful about styrofoam? Like why just like put all your time and energy like into styrofoam? I feel like it it just has this negative aura about it like even back in elementary school eating off of these trays we kind of knew that there was something off about it um, even at that young age um, but foam particularly it uh, never really goes away in the environment. So when it gets into our waterways, into our harbor, uh, it'll break down into tiny particles um, that can actually absorb toxins. Um, and so it's a particularly noxious form of plastic. Um, do, it can you know. also, it's extremely hard to recycle. Um, our coworker, Nick, actually uh, calls the recycling of styrofoam um, with air quotes, recycle the styrofoam. Um, just because you have to clean it, wash it, make sure it's free of any stains, put it in a clear plastic bag and take it to one specific recycling facility on Sisson Street. You can't just toss it into um, the normal curbside recycling. Also, let's talk about this where polystyrene, what is that? Polystyrene. Yeah, so polystyrene is um, a category of plastics. It's a chemical that makes up plastics. Um, and styrofoam is a particular type of polystyrene. Styrofoam is actually kind of the the industry name, um, and it's the common term that most people use, the technical name is expanded polystyrene. So it's like polystyrene, but you've put air bubbles into there, so it's um, kind of lighter weight and you know feels a bit flimsier. Regular polystyrene might be just like um, anything that's hard plastic. So. And I'll also know from my personal experience, after talking to you guys at the City Hall Rally, like I really tried in my house, because I just realized we used a surprisingly large amount of styrofoam to get to use paper, and it just opened my eyes because I didn't realize exactly how much styrofoam we were using. Like, I mean, like when I go to restaurants now, when I go to eat, I'm like, oh crap, I am surrounded by mm -hmm. foam. And I didn't realize it until I spoke with you guys. So thank you for that personally. But um, another question is, um, how have you guys been able to get other students involved? I know you mentioned previously, like you went out and just talked to students, but how have you like other than surveys and stuff, kind of students to get involved in? 
So we do um, school visits. So we work with about 15 main Baltimore City public schools, although we've worked with several more schools across the city. Um, we do give school presentations and we engage them in like youth workshops, um, our educational like youth summits and our rallies and lobby days. Yeah, so uh, we, we go to schools around the city and, and have found that students are really interested in our work when we present. We're going to take a quick break from our conversation with Mercedes and Claire, but when we return, we'll talk about the challenges of advocating for environmental issues. Stay tuned. Hi, students and families. You can get to thousands of free online books in three easy steps. First, log on to www.kidsa-z.com or download the Kids A through Z app. Next, enter the teacher username. You should have received this already from your teacher. If you haven't, ask for it at school tomorrow. And finally, Click on Reading Room and pick a book. If you need any help, please ask your child's teacher. Work is underway on modernizing school buildings, like here at Fort Worthington Elementary Middle School. The type of school buildings we deserve. Our new schools will provide community-friendly spaces and be better for our environment. They will allow for innovative technology and 21st century teaching and learning. The 21st Century School Buildings Program is positively affecting my education and my city. That's right. Learn more about this major commitment from the state, city of Baltimore, and city schools by visiting Baltimore21stCenturySchools.org. Building a brighter future together. I am a Baltimore City Public School student. I am a lot of from Baltimore City Public School. I am a Baltimore City B. Salut, je suis une élève de Baltimore City Public School. So I am a student of Baltimore City Public Schools. I am a student of Baltimore City Public Schools. I am a student of Baltimore City we are Baltimore City Public School students. And we celebrate diversity every day. Welcome back to Baltimore Pioneers. I'm Jacqueline Hammond here with Mercedes Thompson and Claire Weiner, co-founders of Baltimore Beyond Plastic, who have taken on some real environmental issues and their demand for change in our city and states. So, um, do you guys consider yourselves to be activists? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'd say so. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 kind of tough to label yourself with a term, but I'd say like at this point, you know, we've had rallies, we've lobbied legislators. I have yeah. to say because like I saw the turnout you guys got, and I was just like, if you don't consider yourself to be activist, trust me, that's how you're coming across, and that's how I view you guys, which is really um, good. So, and with this, you guys consider yourself to be activists, but you're definitely pushing for a really, really like large cause. Because like I said before, lots of people use styrofoam. So I'm sure when people hear of like a ban, especially coming from students, like they're going to be some lobbyists. But as students, how have you like dealt with kind of like the pushback you've probably gotten trying to, you know, push forward this plan? Yeah, well, um, as students, we, um, you know, throughout the school process, actually, they encourage you to do your research well, to use and cite your sources. So we realized that we had to go back to the research. So we pulled out all sorts of research about foam. Um, and when we heard uh, that the main concern was with businesses and how they'd adapt, uh, some of us went out onto the street and we did surveying of local Baltimore businesses from around the city uh, just to see how exactly it would impact them and, and what they thought about the bill. Generally, legislators have been particularly receptive to students, you know, coming and talking to them um, because they want to hear from the youth voice. So we haven't had much pushback on the council member front, um, at least from what I've seen. And I remember back a couple of weeks ago being at the um, city um, hall meeting, you guys had the rally. There were definitely some businesses, though, who weren't definitely weren't standing behind this lobbyist. Can you talk a little bit about their views and how you guys counteracted them and like how that was like getting up there? Um, well, I would say that uh, we're always resistant to change, right? When we see this bill coming, especially the word ban, it's, it's like, well, we can't possibly do this. We've been doing this for a couple years. We don't want to switch. Um, but then we look at fellow districts that have made the change, like D.C., Prince George's County, Montgomery County, and a host of other places around the country. And yeah, there was pushback before those bills were passed, but they've been implemented really successfully um, and smoothly and have had good impacts on the environment. A lot of small business owners complain about the cost um, and the price differential between um, 
styrofoam and you know alternatives like clear plastic clamshells or compostables. Um, so that's why we did the small business surveying, like Claire mentioned, um, to try and see you know whether or not. Uh, businesses would be able to adapt to that change and also it's the reason why the amendment was introduced into the bill to move it from a 90 day um, switch over phase to an 18 month um, time period for them to make the switch. That's really cool and besides styrofoam what are some other issues you guys are advocating for? Um, I would say well starting with other types of plastics like plastic bags um, but I think you need to look at it from a holistic perspective and realize that our waste is coming from somewhere and so we need to switch to more responsible disposal, right? So more recycling, more composting. You know, they gave us all a big green trash can every household, but that's only for trash and that's only step one, right? So we need to keep expanding so that we aren't just throwing everything away. Um, new like resources, so we're gonna ban styrofoam this city, hopefully, but what are some things that we're gonna replace it with? Like, or also, how will we even enforce this? Like, how will we make sure that people aren't still just like buying styrofoam? <laughs> so it would be replaced with uh, clear clamshells or like compostable containers. Um, basically anything that can be composted or, or recycled. Um, and I believe the Baltimore City Health Department will be the ones enforcing the bill. Okay, so, oh, and also, oh my goodness, how could I forget this? So you guys also had another big triumph with Baltimore City Schools. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I'd say that was actually one of the motivating uh, reasons behind our campaign for styrofoam in Baltimore City as a whole, um, because we eat off of styrofoam every day at our schools. And I think that if, if I were to say that it was just Mercedes and me, I would be totally wrong, because this movement has built up over many years. Students have advocated against these trays. Um, and so back in January, the school board decided to switch to compostable trays. And we were grateful for the support that we got from inside city schools, from the Department of Food and Nutrition. I mean, everyone was very supportive of the switch. It's extremely exciting to know that in all 182 schools throughout Baltimore City, we're, not, we're going to be able to walk in and not see stacks and stacks of styrofoam trays anymore. They'll all be compostable. Um, and we're very excited to see that before we leave. That's really, really good. So we're going to take another quick break, but when we come back, we'll discuss what Claire and Mercedes have learned and what the future entails, all happening right here on Baltimore Pioneers. I just really just wanted to take care of my family a lot. I knew that like I could be the one to sort of make my family proud, make the city proud. And so when I'm like studying late at night, I just remember that my family is like dependent on me. And so it means a lot to me if if I can just make that dream come true. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Everyone has a role to play when it comes to making sure each student is in school every day. By working together, the entire school community can create a school climate that makes school a place where students want to be and a place where teaching and learning can thrive. Schools where students and families feel welcomed, supported, and respected reinforce a culture of high attendance expectations and are exciting places to be. So do your part in making sure that all of our students are in school every day, ready to learn. The most important thing is to try to find out what you want to do with your life. Well, I've always wanted to be a doctor, so that's sort of like guided me and that's sort of like been my motivation to do so well in school. And that will be your motivation if you say, hey, I want to be a photographer, then you'll work towards that. If you want to be a doctor, you'll work towards that. And you'll pick the college or you'll do whatever. You'll pick the internships and that will just sort of guide you. So try to find some type of long-term goal if you can and just let that guide you like I did. Welcome back to Baltimore Pioneers. I'm Jacqueline Hammett coming to you from the newly renovated Parkway Theater here with Claire and Mercedes from Baltimore Beyond Plastic. So guys, so what are some of the biggest things you guys learned while running this organization? Definitely that youth have power and we're really underrepresented in like legislation and policy. Um, policy that's going to be impacting us when we're adults and we have our own children. Um, and especially since, you know, 
Council President Jack Young even said, you know, he's previously been against a styrofoam ban in Baltimore City the past three times it's been introduced, but because of the youth that are a part of our movement that he's talked to, he's now reversed his opposite, um, his stance on the bill, which was really fundamental in, you know, getting it to this stage. Which brings me to my next question, like, were there any times you guys felt just like giving up, like this is going nowhere, no one wants to like, you know, listen to us? Yeah, I'd say that um, sometimes at the legislative hearings, uh, opponents of the bill will come out and they'll deliver some really powerful testimonies to the point where you kind of think, gosh, are we pushing the right bill or what is our, what do our points look back? But that just improves you in the long run because you go back, you go back to the drawing board and you figure out how can I make my argument stronger? Um, and you realize why you really are pushing a bill like a phone ban. And initially when we started off, we were a pretty new organization, you know, we were just a couple of kids, you know, trying to get other students involved. And some of the other environmental organizations didn't take us as seriously. But because of all the work that we've been doing, we've been showing them, you know, that we are part of this movement and we have something to contribute and um, what we're doing is worthwhile. And speaking of which, you guys both are seniors this year. I mean, how has it been trying to manage school and, you know, BBP? Like, I know I'm stressed and I don't, I don't even run an organization. Like, <laughs> it's been insane. Yeah, yeah. We were so lucky, though, because this year we've brought on five additional lead members of the team. Um, so it's been just so helpful to be able to share that workload and also get more minds working on it so that we can produce a better product. And is there anything you guys are taking from this experience with you to college? Like, what are you guys majoring in, doing? I'm going to be hopefully majoring in environmental public health. Um, so initially I started off, you know, thinking I was going to go into di health disparities and, you know, try and solve issues facing Baltimoreans um, from the health perspective. But I'm especially now more focused on, like, the environmental issues and how that contributes, you know, um, health problems. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to be majoring in environmental engineering, looking at uh, designing systems that can mitigate the pollution that we do produce, like plastics. And how do you guys plan on taking like this one, like advocacy and like helping tie into all different environmental issues? Because, you know, we have so many issues, not just around like, styrofoam, but many other things going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> so youth. Styrofoam is the issue that we've been focusing on, but really, you know, youth want to see, you know, a greener future because this is the world that we're going to be living on um, for the rest of our lives. And so everything that's happening now is going to impact us in the future. So while styrofoam is the issue that we've been focusing on, you know, other issues like plastic bags. Um, yeah, and other environmental legislation that's in Annapolis right now, like the Clean Jobs Bill, um, there's a bill going through on bee pesticides, like all these bills can be pushed forward by students. And I think that our organization serves as a lesson that students can step up and, and make a difference. Oh, you guys are going to be graduating soon. You guys are the co-founders. So how do you plan on keeping Baltimore Beyond Plastic going even after, you know, technically you're gone in a sense? So like Claire mentioned, we hired five new interns this year. So we have two juniors and a sophomore. And so they've been throughout with us throughout this year and they've been through the experience of you know, helping to plan events, calling up the media. And so we're hoping that we're going to leave them with the key skills that they need to succeed and help Baltimore Beyond Plastic thrive even after we're gone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they choose to do so, we really hope they do. Uh, but we also are hoping that this appearance is you know, a kind of advertisement to students across Baltimore that hey, if you're going to be around next year and you want to work on this advocacy, you know, give us a call. And also while you guys are in school, do you guys also plan on like starting any other groups, or organizations, maybe not your first year, but... Yeah, I'm certainly hoping to look into a state plastic bag ban or something like <laughs> that. that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, just the fact that, you know, from this experience, we've learned that youth have power. So being able to take that information and apply it, you know, to changing your undergraduate campus for the better, or, you know, the city in your, co your college is in. So let's take our last break for this episode. And when Baltimore Pioneers returns, we will be joined by Nick and Dennis from Baltimore Beyond Plastic to hear about their experience. We'll be right back. College life so far how you expect it? 
I mean, it's not the glamour that you see on television and everything. I mean, it's a lot of work, especially transitioning from being a high school student to a college student because you have like a lot of free time, so you have to learn how to balance that, like who your professor is and how to study, how to make sure you're on your best for each and every class. So it's like really having to have self-control over yourself to say, I want to do my best. So I'm in Baltimore City. I graduated from Baltimore City College in class of 2013. Now I'm at UMBC and I am working on a biology degree. I'm graduating this, this May and hopefully I'll get into Johns Hopkins or University of Maryland Medical School. I can be a doctor. Can you tell us a little bit about the difference between your experience in city schools and your experience in college? I think that the main difference is how people act. So in Baltimore City, we have sort of like this way of kidding with each other, whereas not, that's not really like the, the social norm out with the, some of the county kids at UMBC, and so they'll take it kind of seriously at times. It's, it's just it's like sort of different cultural aspects. Welcome back to Baltimore Pioneers. I'm Jacqueline Hammond, here with Baltimore Beyond Plastic. So far we've spoken with co-founders Claire and Mercedes, but now we have Nick and Dennis joining us. How are you guys today? Good, how are you? That's good. So can you tell me a little bit, how has your experience been working with Baltimore Beyond Plastic? No, it's one of the great things that I've done in my high school career. Um, so I've wanted to get involved in this issue, seeing styrofoam trays in our lunchrooms, and finally, seeing the success we've had in the school board, it's really a gratifying experience for me. Nice. And you, how has your experience been? Um, this is just a great opportunity to have, to have overall, um, just to be able to work with such um, smart and energetic people is... You don't have to lie. Time. I know your bosses are right behind you. <laughs> like, you can be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, this has um, been an opportunity of a lifetime. But that's great. And so, Energic, one thing, like, you, I know you're just a sophomore this year, so do you plan on carrying on, you know, the legacy of Baltimore Beyond Plastic? Because I know all these three, they're seniors this year, so. Um, it's certainly scary that I'll be um, taking on this project with me, hopefully um, other students, but I do plan on keeping this organization going. And are there any other members who are in lower grades besides you? Um, currently, no. Oh my god, really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So that's like an open question to the group now. Are you guys doing anything to like, like now try and like really, really bring in members to the group so <laughs> Nick right here isn't lonely and by himself <laughs> the upcoming year? We've been year. a bit busy with like planning the rallies in, uh, in City Hall and Annapolis. Uh, we haven't really started that much, but we hope to uh, start start a recruitment campaign <laughs> in the coming months, yeah. Okay. So also, so a big thing now, our generation seems to be having more mainstream attention lately when it comes to all sorts of issues. We all know about civil rights, police brutality, gun control just recently. And so what are you guys' thoughts about all this attention right now that like us as youth are getting and our voices being heard? Yeah, so I think it really underscores the fact that youth are really interested and involved in uh, politics. So. One of the things that I do as part of the team is present at like community associations throughout the city, and people are really always surprised to see, su surprised to hear that I'm just a high school student. They really, um, they really expect me to be like an adult advocating for su such issues. Um, so it really shows that youth are involved. Youth um, are important voices to be ha are at at the table. And I know, like you guys, again, like the lobbyist thing. Like I mean, especially for you, like how is it when you have to go up and speak and you just have like this room full of adults and some of them like screaming things at you and against styrofoam? Um, <laughs> it's really intimidating, but I mean, I have great coworkers and friends to guide me along the way. Um, it's been tough to um, help the. Uh, lobbyists to understand what we're thinking, but I think we've been able to get people to support. Yeah, so I've had the pleasure to testify at both the City Hall hearing and a hearing in Annapolis, and one of the things you realize through the process of writing the testimonies and giving the testimonies is that it really is just facts versus facts. Like, you don't really, um, once you get familiar with the process, you don't really get intimidated by the fact that they are paid lobbyists, but um, you really focus on um, the arguments and the facts more. 
Uh, good question. What are some of the most like outrageous things you guys heard? I think at some of these rallies, like <laughs> said to you guys, have there any been some really things really saying? They're like, I know they didn't just say that about <laughs> like, the issue. Uh, I think actually that people like to see styrofoam burned was the most outrageous thing I've heard. Indeed. Yeah, that like they they like to see styrofoam burned because it makes the fires go higher. Yeah, that doesn't. <laughs> 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 It's, that's really interesting. <laughs> so, um, but another question going back like to the questions before, how is like Baltimore Beyond Plastic like impacted you guys? Um, well, Dennis and everyone else is already going off to college, but I think this is something I'll be able to put on um, a college application. Um, and it's also giving me like opportunities that again, come one in a lifetime. Like what, what opportunities have you been presented with? Um, I don't think that everyone gets to meet their legislators and it's been really cool that I can uh, voice my myself to my legislators. And I still asked Claire and Ms. Ace this earlier, but for you, is there anything you're taking from Baltimore Beyond Plastic and applying it to, you know, your experience once you get into college? Yeah, you definitely learn a lot of organizational and planning skills. Um, you learn how to conduct uh, successful meetings, What what, how to divide work. Um, yeah, and it's, it's a really gratifying feeling that you get when you have, like finish a project, when you have a successful rally. It's a really nice feeling to have, yeah. And do you personally plan on starting any new organizations or groups while you're in college? Um, hopefully, yeah, I will join one. Um, the college will be busy, but we'll oh, see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course, like, <laughs> just go work first. So, Nick, I've heard you have some prior experience with like greenhouse and environmental work. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, um, back in elementary and middle school, I, um, I was part of my school's green team and we were attending uh, CLAB meetings at the Office of Sustainability and um, ever since then I've been involved. Um, Commodore John Rogers, we, when we used styrofoam trays, um, one of our school volunteers, Miss Carolyn Boynton, she'd clean down the trays and bag thousands of trays and send them off to Sisson Street that um, that Mercedes mentioned earlier. Um, but since then I've been able to reconnect with the Office of Sustainability and work with the Baltimore Community Foundation and ever since then I've been part of this movement. That's really really cool. So I know one of my previous questions before was about how our generation just recently has been getting a lot of press and media about a lot of different things we've been advocating for and a lot of these problems aren't new and haven't it's been around for a while. Why do you feel like now like number one we're still fighting for these things and they're really just recently getting a lot of like press and attention? Um, it's, it's a very monumental time um, since kids are starting to advocate for what they believe in um, in the legislative process. Um, I think um, ever since kids started taking a role in this, um, the legislators started to open their eyes and realize, wow, these kids actually care about this. And um, it's just something that they are un inspired about. Another thing I think it's just like noticeability. So like with the rise of social media, you've seen all these events on the news and stuff and kids r really are involved. They want to know things about the world that they live in so they can be able to follow all these issues on their, on their, uh, through their lives. And then um, it, it pushes them to get involved in these issues. Also, do you think it helps it easier for them to find organization, organizations like Baltimore Beyond Plastic and other like youth-led organizations? Like, have you guys gotten anyone who's been like, who's found you guys off of social media and stuff? Yeah, and, yeah. Get, you know, random Facebook messages from someone who's from Georgia running a similar <laughs> campaign, really. And, and so we get to connect with them. People sliding into the DMs on Instagram, <laughs> you know, how can I get involved? I just learned about you guys while I was scrolling through my Instagram feed. So I'd like to thank all of you, Claire, Mercedes, Nick, Dennis, for coming and speaking with us about your organization, Baltimore Beyond Plastic, and all the great things you've done to help support our city and the environment. Thank you very much for being here, speaking with us. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for having me. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. And I'd like to thank you for watching Baltimore Pioneers, a program where we talk with thinkers and doers in Baltimore. And I would also like to thank the Parkway Theater for allowing us to film here. Come check this place out. 
The show is produced by the City School Student Media Team and is brought to you by the Proximity Project in Education Channel 77 of Baltimore City Public Schools. This has been Baltimore Pioneers and I'm Jacqueline Hammett. See you next time.